it, it originated out of a, a, a moment in time um, that lasted for quite a long time in terms of moments, but uh, a falling in love, falling in love with a place um, with notion, there's notions of self-love and falling in love with Siobhan and the world that she opened up to me in that. I had been playing around with it, different ideas um, around hurling, which is this indigenous game that we have in in, in Ireland uh, that has traveled mostly with, with, with Irish people around the world. Um, and I feel there's a responsibility in mastery to break down the game, uh, to revisit the origins of when you fell in love at five and six, or people who came to it later at 15 and 16, or even 55 and 56, to break down the origins in a simple and digestible way that makes the game come to life inside them and they get that feeling of the five and six year old and that we can restore at the center maybe it doesn't need to be the center but very close to the center at least the notion that play do you know why do the why do the cars why do the roads have to be have to be always open for cars why can't we just take them over and play hurling matches why can't we go to the beach go to the fields and just play you know not not to to remove the notion of you know sitting with two or three people for a coffee like just take out a hurling ball and and and, and puck about you know to, to kind of reinstate this idea of play as opposed to the competitive um side of, of of the game so that was infused then into uh wild Irish retreat and the language really brought that to life because there's a certain few words and few phrases that you get by at a certain level but then when the good stuff comes up, and this is the thing with the Irish language, the good stuff is the stuff that's, it, this learning from the outside doesn't work. It's like, no, what's in you? What Irish is in you? That's the question at the start. What Irish is in you? And can we get it out of you? And often when you go into practices like the Yoga Nidra, you get right deep down into the person. All of a sudden, you just open this fountain. The same plane hurling. When, you, when, they, when they just let go of the intellectual self, their sense of themselves on the high street, when they let that go, they leave that down. All of a sudden, the words just come and the, it's infused with anger, frustration, joy, smiles, like it's infused with all of it. So that's been, um, yeah, it's been, it's been really beautiful. And there's the, the constant struggle for sure of when you're doing something beautiful, what happens? I don't know, is it in myself or in the tendency of the masculine talking to, um, to, talking to that energy around me sometimes? Is, does that, be, the danger of that becoming ego driven? Um, so there's a, a constant kind of a conversation there because when I when I played the game at a very high level in the in what I would call maybe the more normal world, um, that the ego got the better of me there. So it's uh, yeah, it's, it, it brings it brings constant constant learning. And what it, I suppose what it is as well. I mean, just if 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 anyone didn't know, it's what we do is we are creating a community to reclaim the Irish language in Ireland. Um, most people people are speaking Irish here now, but urban speakers, they're not uh, native speakers. Um, so they're learning when they're grown. And there's a there's a, a real psychological block to the Irish language in Ireland, a very, very serious one. And so we're going after we're going after the block instead of trying to teach the Irish. Because when you take out the block, the Irish starts to flow. Mm. And so there's, we have four ways where we do that. And it basically was the ways, the paths that we chose ourselves, that we, what, what brought us to the Irish language is what we're sharing naturally enough. And um, for me, it was ritual, Daskano and Shalgrath, which is foraging, foraging the wild foods. And for Dermot, it was Imaniacht and Hurling that he just described. And, uh, and it was the language, it was the language itself. Um, that brought him back into this feeling of connection. Um, and I just say for myself on those two things of ritual and wild food foraging as a means to build up your relationship with the land, because that's what we're talking about, fixing your relationship with the land and the language and how those two are totally and utterly in interconnected. You can't even, it's beautiful how they come together in this, uh, in these weekends that we do, you know, pure magic all the time. And uh, the, the, the connection with the land is in the relationship. And I mentioned that in the email, the relationship that you have with each individual flower and plant. And it is like, it is like passing your neighbours. That's what a good metaphor, it was like passing my neighbours every day and not saying hello, because I didn't know their names. 
And then I got a book and I learned their names. And so I started to say hello. And then I learned their use. And then I started to work with them. And then a relationship built up. I, I just started to eat them. And I started to make a few medicines for myself. And then they were healing me. And then I did a plant spirit medicine and I started talking to them in my dreams. And all of a sudden the relationship was. And now when they come every summer, it's like saying hello to an old friend, you know. And, and, and when they go, it is like saying goodbye to a friend. And that, that for me was a very sure and practical pathway back to my indigenosity, to the, through the food, through the wild edible food. The trees, if you will, are the root, are the seed of the Irish language. And very interestingly, incidentally, providentially, coincidentally, there's 2% of native woodland in Ireland. We have the lowest level of native woodland in, in, the, in all of Europe, 2%. And there's 2% native Irish speakers left in the country. Do you know? I, I, and like, do you think there might be a link? I have this poem. Do you think there might be a link between the oaks and the oam, between the song and the song? Because when they felled Kildarach, Kildarach, it means the church of the oak. And then they, they changed all the names in Ireland. They did this brutal translation of the Luganam, the place names, and all the meanings of the names were lost and the information and the local knowledge. The knowledge of everything is in the place name. You'd know, because they were named after trees a lot of the places. So Kildarach, you'd know not only that that was where the oaks grew, but you know the kind of soil that was there as well, because the oak could only grow in a certain kind of place. You'd know it was maybe a sacred place, but you don't know that when you hear Kildare, because Kildare kind of means something else doesn't it? And uh, so when they fell Kildare and then they called it Kildare, did you think that it was Farrah that they'd try hunt down the hare? And the hare is the totem of the Irish language. But she was too fast. And so she did outlast the great genocide to wait the turning of the tide when Irish men once again speak Irish and oaks fill the horizon.